Yo, yo, what's up guys? JP back at you once again, bringing you guys another VHS slash DVD slash Blu-ray slash 4K update here. This is not as massive as the last couple that I've had, but we still got some decent stuff here. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Um, we have some VHS here. Uh, this one I paid a dollar for at Goodwill, I believe. It is The Quiet Earth. Uh, this is a CBX, CBS Fox video, home video. Um, I, it looks like some sort of post-apocalyptic sci-fi type movie, so, you know, that that's kind of interesting to me. I, I really like the cover and just the the title of it, so I decided to pick it up. It was a dollar. Um, not sure when I'll get around to seeing it, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool pickup. After that, we have Creature from the Black Lagoon. I really like these Universal Monsters, like, classic collection VHSs. Um, I've always been a fan of them. And uh, this one is probably one of the best Universal Monster films, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I paid 50 cents for this, so I was really happy to own this. And it's a cool, you know, it's cool to have those old VHS. And sometimes I like, you know, display them a little bit and stuff. But after that, we have uh, The Creature Walks Among Us. Um, which is also part of that classic collection. This one was actually sealed. The the seal has seen better days, but I think this is the second one or the th I think it's well obviously it's the second or third, but um, I want to say it's the third one. But it could be the second one. I know Revenge of the Creature is one of them, um, so I'm not 100% sure what this one actually is, um, but. I, I don't really like the sequels that much, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, that is The Creature Walks Among Us, which I also paid 50 cents for, so, uh, those are the VHS, I really gotta calm down on the VHS, I, I've been saying that, and I have calmed down a little bit, I don't buy nearly as many uh, as I used to, because space is limited, man, it's, it's really getting limited. Alright, next up we have some non-horror DVDs. Um, I normally don't buy a ton of non-horror, and you guys know that, uh, and bear with me, it's really quick, I'm not going to spend too much time on them, and then we got plenty of horror, so if you only come for the horror, just hold up one second. Uh, so first up, we have this Big Lots DVD pickup, um, Looney Tunes Stranger Than Fiction. Now, I bought this because I love the Looney Tunes. I hadn't realized that I love the Looney Tunes as much as I did um, lately, like, I found myself, like, looking up old Looney Tunes shorts on YouTube a little while back, and kind of being fascinated and, and remembered how much I liked them. Like, I don't own any merchandise, or, like, you know, I don't, I'm not a massive, massive fan or anything, but I think back of, like, the stuff that I loved in my childhood, and Looney Tunes is right up there. There's so many cool characters, right? Um, like, so many. There, there really is so many good characters in the Looney Tunes universe. Um... But I, I pop this in, trash. It's trash. Um, there's a let like I think I watched the first eleven shorts out of the nineteen that are there, and they were like all like from a series that I never seen. Like something, it like honestly like just trash. It almost seemed like it was a segment from a Looney Tunes show that existed in like the two thousands or something. It wasn't the shorts that I remembered. I figured it would be like the cool like horror based ones with like the witch hazel and um you know the gossamer like big thing and marvin the martian and stuff but no i mean that those people are there but they're, they're, it's just not good it's not good shorts so um i'm not sure what series this was from but this was massively disappointing i was so bummed out uh after that we have um a couple of warner brothers uh tv show seasons um, been wanting to pick a lot of these up. So first up here we have Scooby-Doo Where Are You? Um, this is the complete first and second season. Uh, it does have the 50th anniversary collection here, but it is just the diamond um, diamond collection that Hanna-Barbera uh, released. And I think that, uh, you know, under Warner Brothers, uh, I think that if, if you're a horror fan, you probably grew up watching Scooby-Doo, um, regardless of your age, because it's been around so long and I remember watching it all the time as a kid, and, you know, it, it's definitely some gateway horror stuff, uh, but I haven't seen Scooby-Doo in so long, I wanted to revisit it, uh, watched like one or two episodes, and uh, was really, really happy with it, so I'll uh, definitely get back to that, but yeah, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, Season 1 and 2, I've wanted it for so long, finally decided to bite the bullet on it. Uh, after that, we have another show that I, I used to love as a kid, and that's The Flintstones, the complete first season. And we have the Hanna-Barbera Diamond Collection here. 
Uh, so the Flynn set, I know that there's a complete series box set that was released, but I figured that, you know, I would pick him up individually. Um, I really like these slim covers, and I, I think they're pretty cool. So um, the Hanna-Barbera Diamond Collection is pretty cool because I know for a long time, all these old Hanna-Barbera shows had been released on DVD um, in like thicker box sets, like everything from the Flintstones to um, like weird stuff like Herculoids that only lasted like one season. Uh, and there was all these box sets, but they were always so expensive. I think they were like $30, $40. Some of them were out of print. So I'm happy to see um, Warner Brothers release more old Hanna-Barbera stuff. Um, the you know through this diamond collection which is definitely more affordable I think I paid like twelve dollars for this at Walmart uh, which seemed like a pretty good price uh, so the Flintstones I remember as a kid um, you know a lot of the old Hanna-Barbera shows were still on when I was really young you like in the 90s early 90s uh, they ran all the time and then towards the later 90s you can only see them at night it was like the Flintstones was more popular but a lot of the other shows like you know Yogi Bear and stuff it it only ran like really late at night but I remember the Flintstones even started running later at night and I remember always watching uh, I think it was like at 10 or 11 p.m. and it was like every night it was an episode of the Flintstones and an episode of the Jetsons and I always watched both of them uh, before I went to sleep you know for school so really happy to get that I watched like the first two episodes very nostalgic for me uh, this is a show that I actually didn't watch a lot of. I've seen a couple episodes of it, and I've seen, you know, some... I've seen I've seen a little bit of it, but it, it was never, like, my favorite or anything. But I figured I would give it a shot since, uh, you know, I, I do like these Hanna-Barbera stuff. And that's the uh, Smurfs, the complete first season. Um, I know a lot of people love the Smurfs. I've never been massively into them. In fact, I probably watched the Snorks more than the Smurfs. Very similar kind of show. Um, but yeah, I've seen I've seen some of the Smurfs, so I'm curious to recheck it out. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, the Jetsons, the first season. Um, I love the Jetsons. Flintstones and Jetsons are super cool to me. Uh, I probably was more familiar with the Flintstones, but I do really like the Jetsons too. So um, really excited. 24 episodes. Uh, I I, I want to pick up more of these Hanna Barbera things. I was kind of picking them up like every one one a week for a little while. Um, but they, I think they still have like Yogi Bear and like Top Cat there at, at my Walmart. But uh, I know there's more sets online. Like I think Magilla Gorilla's out, and I don't know if uh, I think Huckleberry Hound maybe. Um, but yeah, the, I love I love those old Hanna Barbera shows. Like they, they're really cool. Um, I also have the Johnny Quest one, which I picked up on Black Friday. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the horror stuff. So first up here, I got this at a secondhand store. We have Prey, uh, which is a Tartan Asian extreme film. I think I paid $2 for this. Um, I don't know anything about it, but I, I, I like the Tartan Asian extreme uh, line. So I try to pick them up when I see them, especially in, you know, used stores that are, you know, where it's going to be cheap. Uh, after that, we have Puppet Master, The Littlest Reich. I think I paid $3 for this at a uh, secondhand store. I was going to wait for the Blu-ray or even, <laughs> I think it's on 4K too, just simply because um, I'm, I pretty much buy like all new films on Blu-ray or 4K now, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I just, it was so cheap that I figured I would just pick it up now, um, I, I do own most of the Puppet Masters on DVD, I, I don't have many of them on Blu-ray, so I guess it's not a huge deal, but yeah, this was a great movie, it was a lot of fun. Uh, after that, picked this up at a, uh, for like six bucks, I think, I, I really like the, just double disc collection thing of these old DVDs so I picked it up it's a trauma it is terror firmer uh, the unrated director's cut uh, I've never seen this film and I've always heard that it's you know one of trauma's best so I thought it'd be pretty cool to pick up um, and you know it was kind of cool to see you know I don't see a lot of trauma out in the wild where I live so I thought that it would it'd be kind of cool to pick up um, same store I grabbed this um, it was just an older anchor bay so I figured I would give it a shot um, I've never heard of it. It is Apartment Zero. Um, don't know anything about it, but uh, it was in really, you know, good condition. Felt very sturdy case, old Anchor Bay. So if you would pick it up. Um, <laughs> this one right here. I grabbed this at Walmart simply because I kind of like Scarecrow movies, but this was, the, I, I expected this one to be bad, but it was Bride of Scarecrow. It's not even Bride of the Scarecrow, it's Bride of Scarecrow. Um, 
it sucked. Um, Sean C. Phillips, cool dude, was in it for a couple minutes, but yeah, it wasn't very good. Um, you know, I think most people would expect that. Um, a couple more I got from that same secondhand store. Um, they had a lot of these old, uh, they, somebody must have brought in like a, an old DVD collection because all the titles are from like the same time period. Uh, and it's, and they were all in really good condition, like super clean. Uh, we have the item here, which is a, I want to, I want to say I've seen this before on like the sci-fi channel. I don't know if it's like a lizard movie or something. I don't know. looks like Komodo dragon, dragon, something. I don't know. But it's, uh, one of those old artisan releases, which I thought was pretty cool. So figured I would, uh, pick it up. Never heard of it. looks kind of cool. And, uh, it's an old artisan release. Uh, this film here. Also an old artisan release. I think I played two for this one. Uh, and this is uh, Sick, which I think I've seen this before. I think it's really bad, too. I think I, see, I, think I rented this back in the uh, or, uh, you know, like mid to early 2000s. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure this movie sucks. But I did, it, you know, Killer Clown. I mean, it looks... Any Killer Clown movie has, you would think, would have really big potential. But I'm pretty sure that one's not too good. Uh, this one I grabbed from, I think, Bull Moose. I think this title is out of print now. I'm not 100% sure. It's Lionsgate Trimark. Um, but I wanted this because I recently picked up the original. And that is Crocodile 2 Death Swamp. Um, I, I've, I've always liked Crocodile 1 and 2. You know, Toby Hooper's Crocodile. Um, and it's they're not the best movies, but I, I like Killer Crocodile movies. And I, I'm glad to have this on DVD. Um, this one I picked up from Bumus as well, uh, specifically for one reason, and that's the Joe Bob Briggs commentary. It is Blood Sisters. Uh, this was a Shriek Show release. Um, Joe Bob did a bunch of commentaries for Shriek Show releases of uh, some horror films, and I've always wanted to collect all of them. Uh, I only own a couple, and there's a lot more that I don't own, and there's some that are even out of print, so... Good luck getting those, but I love Joe Bob, huge fan of Monster Vision, and now The Last Drive-In, which I did watch last week. It was really good. Uh, after that, we have Murder Party, which um, is a Jeremy Solnair film. Uh, this is actually pretty good, man. This is this is a fun um, comedy horror film. Uh, lots of fun. Um, kind of simple, basic, but it's set on Halloween night, which is pretty cool. And I recently watched this. We covered it on the podcast, and I saw it for four dollars. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna grab this." Uh, after that, we have um, a Dracula film that I'm not, I'm not sure what year this is from, or I think it's like '79, and I'm not sure like what series this is from. I I don't even know which Dracula this is, but it was the Snapper case. So I picked it up. It's Dracula, just Dracula. Um, I I. I don't know. This I guess this was like a n another adaptation of Dracula from the seventies, which I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know if I own this in any other format or anything. It's uh, Universal. Uh, after that, I uh, got a couple of art exploitations here. First up, we have um, Norway's uh, number sixty-two, the man with the magic box. Um, looks like a sci-fi type one. Gonna check that out soon. Uh, after that, we have Terror 5, which looks, is I don't know if this is, um, an, I think it's an anthology, um, which is, uh, comes out today, actually, so pick it up. Um, Argentina, number 63. Then we have Do It Yourself, which is Greece, and it's Art uh, Exploitation 64. Um, so this one's from Greece. Um, this one looks kind of cool, though. It looks like a technology horror, so pretty interested in that. Uh, oh, and then we have another one. I didn't even realize that. Uh, the House, um, which looks to be maybe like a Nazi one um, or something, which is pretty cool. I, I like uh, Nazi. I don't know if it's zombies or what, um, but Norway, number 57. So there's some art exploitations I picked up. Uh, just a couple more DVDs here. Uh, first up um, in the last three here, we have Elvira's movie Macabre. And this is Night of the Living Dead and I Eat Your Skin. Um, picked this up because I recently um, was doing the of the Dead series, the George Romero Dead series, and figured I might watch this version of Night of the Living Dead, but I never got around to it. So um, Elvira is awesome, you know. We love Elvira, so kind of cool. I don't own any of those. I don't own any of those uh, double features that was put out from was it Shout Factory? No, this one's E1. I think Shout Factory did a couple too, though. Uh, oh, 
I accidentally kicked the camera. Let me readjust that. Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Alright, after that we have um, an Amicus film. I paid more than I wanted to for this. I think this is out on Blu-ray now. Uh, this is Dark Sky here. But it, it's so often that I don't I don't see this stuff in the wild. Uh, it's not very often that I see this stuff, so um, I decided to give it a shot. And it's a 1972 movie. I need to watch those anyway. So I paid $8 for Asylum on DVD. Probably overpaid, but, you know, whatever. Um, I kind of got excited when I seen it in the wild. Uh, and then finally here for the DVDs, we have Cold Fish, which is a bloody disgusting selects. Um, this is from Cyan Sano, um, who is a, uh, Japanese director. Uh, we recently covered, uh, this film on the podcast and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I watched it online and, uh, I loved it so much that I instantly went and bought a copy. It was only like $6 new, well worth the money. So I, de I, I it's such a great movie. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out. All right, um, let's get into, are we in Blu-rays now? Yeah, blu let's get into the Blu-rays. So um, I got a couple of 4Ks here that I'll show first. Um, first up, we have the Evil Dead 2, um, which is a pretty awesome slipcover. And I think that that's a lot. Of, uh, a lot of the slipcovers for the 4Ks are pretty awesome. So I uh, haven't checked it out yet, but Evil Dead 2 on 4K. Uh, after that, we have Alien Covenant on 4K. I swore that I didn't own Alien Covenant. Uh, and then I was, I think I was looking through one of my old videos and I was like, there it is. I was like, Alien Covenant. I own it on Blu-ray. So I paid, I think, $8 for this um, on 4K, Blu-ray, and digital uh, HD. So um, I'm kind of annoyed because I already own the Blu-ray. Uh, I think I paid $6 for the Blu-ray, so I double dipped on Alien Covenant, which I don't even like. Um, but I needed to complete the series, so that's why I wanted to grab it, but I already owned it. So that's kind of annoying, but I guess I'll do something with the Blu-ray, give it away in a contest or something, and keep the 4K. Uh, and then finally we have this awesome, awesome, awesome release here, and it is Pet Cemetery. Look at that slipcover, guys. That That is one thing that is making me want to pick up these 4Ks right away because they're coming out with some really cool slipcovers. The re the upcoming release of Alien, awesome slipcover. But this one, dude, I love this slipcover. It's so cool. It's like gorgeous. And I love Pet Cemetery 30th anniversary. Uh, the new film's about to come out, so really excited to check those out. Um, so after that, let's get into the Blu-rays. First up, I have a box set here. Um, I showed this off in another video, but we have Alfred Hitchcock's The Masterpiece Collection. Finally picked this up. This is something that's been on my wish list for such a long time. Finally got it. I, I needed it. I needed to see more Hitchcock films. So, yeah, there's a ton of films in here. I think there's like 15 or so films um, throughout, you know, a lot of his career. Everything from like Frenzy to Psycho, North by Northwest, um, Rear Window, um... The, the saboteur there's there's a bunch of films the birds um but yeah that's alfred hitchcock masterpiece collection pretty cool uh then we have another art exploitation here this is germany 59b we have snowflake uh then i picked up a couple of films um this one i picked up at a, a actually a video rental where did i get this yeah i think i got this from my video rental store uh every once in a while they sell off some of their old titles yeah i still have a video rental store which is pretty crazy sorry ran out of space on my memory card so the gray pretty cool movie um it's not a 100 percent horror but it's like very survival like and i've seen it before it's pretty good uh, after that, I showed a lot of these titles off in, I believe, what was it? Um, I did an unboxing for this stuff. So uh, we have Godzilla vs. Destroya and Godzilla vs. Mega Gear. Mega what? Mega. Mega Gearus. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Godzilla, but I like these double packs here. I want to get some more of them. Uh, after that, we have another double pack here. We have. Uh, Sasquatch and Encounter with the Unknown. This is a Code Red release, so pick that up. Uh, pretty cheap at, I believe, Hamilton Books was the the place. Um, and then after that, we have, I picked this up, Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, $5 at Dollar General. I'm addicted to buying movies at places that shouldn't have movies like Dollar General. 
Um, and I don't know, I think I own just Terminator 1 and 2, so I, I figured, ah, you know, I haven't seen this in a long time. It's not very good, but, you know, I, I, I kind of wanted to revisit it. Um, so that's Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Uh, and then this film, I remember really liking this film as a kid. Um, or, you know, when it came out, I think it was in the 2000s. Um, it was actually 2000. Um, and it's not, it's like sci-fi, but I, I wanted to revisit it. And that's uh, Red Planet. So I grabbed that for $5. I, I've seen it a couple of times, but it's been a really long time. Uh, and then we have the director's cut of Terminator Salvation, which is the fourth film. So um, that was $5. So I decided to pick up some stuff from um, Dollar General, which is funny. Uh, after that, we have this title here I picked up from Kino Lober, um, and that is Needful Things. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, Stephen King adaptation, I believe. I've never seen it, so uh, kind of interested in that one. Uh, after that, we have William Castle double feature, Homicidal and Mr. Saren Sardonicus. Um, I haven't seen these films. Um, some 60s... Uh, horror films which I believe we're doing a William Castle spotlight on our next episode of the podcast so I figured um, best way to pick those but I think we're doing both of these films so made sense to grab the blu-ray uh, after that we have Straight Jacket and Berserk which I believe are also William Castle films uh, at least Straight Jacket is and I uh, don't know much about them but I figured Echo I think it's Mill Creek actually is this one? yep both Mill Creek um, figured Jeremy said the blu-rays didn't look too bad so uh, I picked them up. After that, a couple of redemption titles. We have Schizo, which is a Pete Walker film. I've seen this before. It was all right. Um, it was super cheap on Hamilton Books, so I decided to grab that. Uh, after that, we have another Pete Walker film, uh, another uh, redemption title from Kino, and that is House of the Whipcord. Um, haven't seen this one, but, you know, uh, more 70s Pete Walker goodness, I guess. <laughs> after that, I picked this up. Um, a double feature of Rob Zombie's Halloween and Halloween 2. Picked this up specifically because these are the theatrical editions and the box set that Scream Factory put out a few years ago, the 15 disc box set, did not actually include the uh, theatrical cuts and I actually like the theatrical cuts. Um, I actually like stuff from both cuts but I wanted to have both versions and so I grabbed this uh, pretty cheap and uh, this is a Canadian release. It's the only way to my knowledge to get both films on uh, Blu-ray in their um, uh, un, or, uh, theatrical versions. After that, we have another Kino. Uh, we have Mario Bava's Black Sunday. I've seen this before. Pretty good. Probably one of Mario Bava's better films from what I've heard. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty good. So wanted to revisit that. Uh, after that, I realized I didn't own the final film in Romero's Dead films, and that is Survival of the Dead. Um, I bought it used here. The only thing it has this little like sort of tear there. Not a huge deal. It was only like five dollars, so whatever. Um, but yeah, kind of bummed me out a little bit that it had that issue. Uh, after that, we have uh, this. I picked this up at Walmart. Uh, five dollars, good price on this. Twenty-eight days later and twenty-eight weeks later on Blu-ray. Um, I own them on DVD in a three-pack with, I think, Return of the Living Dead. So, yeah, you know, it seemed like it was a decent upgrade, especially for five bucks. Two movies, two fifty each. That's that's a really good deal. Uh, after that, grabbed another Kino here, 1944, another Alfred Hitchcock film. We have Lifeboat. I uh, hear this is one of his better films, so excited to see that. It seems like some sort of survival type film. I like stuff like that. So, interested. Uh, after that, we have a Canadian copy of Blair Witch, the third film in the series which I didn't own so I decided to actually pick it up um, I didn't mind it it was all right I didn't love it but um, it was better than I think some people were giving it credit for uh, after that we have a title that I picked up at that um, video rental store again uh, and it's the house on the end of the street Jennifer Lawrence um, it's like a Hitchcockian type thriller I've watched it before it was all right nothing super special uh, after that, we have Unbreakable, um, which I actually picked this up because I went and seen Glass, and my I wanted to pick this up and watch it before I went and seen Glass and ended up running out of time, so I still need to see Unbreakable. Um, after that, we have Silent House, um, which is, uh, I think this is a remake, actually. Um, I've never seen it before, but I went ahead and 
bought that or I think Carly might have gifted me that I'm not sure um, she also gifted me this which is it follows um, I was surprised that I didn't own this I thought I owned it follows and I didn't so I wanted it because I love it follows it was I think my number two favorite horror film of 2013 or 14 I think 15 maybe I can't 2015 I think it was um, so yeah really excited to revisit that one uh, after that we have Halloween um, which I got from Universal. Um, I did a review on it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm indifferent on it. I don't love it. It's all right. Um, I watched it twice. I, it, it, I, ha I have problems with it. After that, we have John Dies at the End. Um, I picked this up because I plan on reading the audio or listening to the audiobook and doing like a bonus podcast on it, and I wanted to see the adaptation as well. Uh, but I just, I have not had time to crack open or however you want to say it, listen to the audiobook. Uh, this title has eluded me forever, and that is I Spit on Your Grave 3, Vengeance is Mine. So I own um, the original I Spit on Your Grave, and then uh, the two, the remake and the sequel to the remake. Um, but the third one, for whatever reason, it was all on Blu-ray. It was always really expensive. Um, so I finally found it for cheap, and I uh, actually finally got a chance to pick it up. So uh, happy to have that. After that, we have Don't Knock Twice, which is a Scream Factory uh, Blu-ray. Picked this one up super cheap as well. Uh, the cover looks really cool, but I've heard mixed things about it. Uh, then I finally grabbed Mad Max Fury Road. Um, I actually really uh, liked this film. So this is a uh, this was also a rental um, uh, from that rental store that. Uh, you know, they sell off some of the rentals. So, yeah, picked up Mad Max Fury Road. I like this film a lot. Uh, after that, I got this in a contest, and that is Land of the Dead, the Collector's Edition. I actually bet that John Jones would beat Alexander Gustafson in the UFC, and my homie Business of Fear, Luis, uh, actually bought me this. So that was pretty cool. Recently watched it uh, for the podcast. So thank you, Luis. Uh, after that, we have The Night Stalker. I uh, picked this up. Um, this is a Kino Studio Classics release. Um, it's a 1972 film. I needed to check it out, so I grabbed it. Still haven't watched it, though. After that, we have our Lone Arrow, our Lone Arrow for the night, uh, for the update, and that is Sergio Martino's Torso. Uh, Moods actually sent me this. I won this in a contest. Um, I love Torso. Torso is really good. Um, Sergio Martino, great film. So happy to have that on Blu-ray. I uh, didn't have the Blue Underground. After that, we have a Bloody New Year from Vinegar Syndrome. They sent me a couple titles. Um, this one is awesome. It's really weird and just bizarre. Like there's, a, there's I, I, did I, I, yeah, I reviewed this. Um, check out the podcast for my full review on it. But this was really cool, uh, as well as the Uninvited or Uninvited. Um, which is a killer cat with a parasitic cat in its mouth that kills people on a boat. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and then we have probably um, one of the not-so-great slashers in Splatter University. So those are my Vinegar Syndrome titles. And then I think I just have a few more Blu-rays here, guys. I just got to do some maneuvering here. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. All right, so um, first up here, I have a steel book of, whoa, careful, almost lost the, the stack. Uh, we have a steel book of Back to the Future, the trilogy, the 30th anniversary trilogy. Um, I don't love steel books, but I, I've been wanting the Back to the Future films on Blu-ray forever. So I finally bit the bullet and went ahead and got this steel book. Um, I don't buy a ton of non-horror, but Back to the Future is one of my favorite films of all time, so I had to pick it up. Um, what do we have here next? Okay, so next up we have a... I, I kind of went crazy with these a little bit. So uh, this is all from Warner Brothers, uh, Warner Archive, the rest of this stuff. So um, really, what, really, I didn't own a lot of Warner Archives, and I just kind of went a little crazy on some titles. So first up here, we have Bad Ronald, which is a title that I think people wanted for a very long time. Warner Archive is a uh, awesome, um, the Archive Collection is an awesome uh, series of films that were released by Warner Brothers um, on DVD, which was like uh, <laughs> manufactured on demand, so they were DVD-Rs, and they were always really expensive. Uh, but the Blu-rays 
are actually pressed and they're not as expensive actually so um they still say they're manufactured on demand i think on the website but yeah they're, they're definitely pressed discs um so that is bad ronald which uh just recently got a blu-ray release i hit up the 10 for or 4 for 44 sale and picked up bad ronald tv movie from the 70s looks awesome uh, then we have the Black Scorpion, which I don't know a ton about, but it looks like a giant monster movie from like the 50s, and it looks like it's about a killer scorpion, so it looks fun to me. Uh, then we picked up Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Had to grab this. I'm not a huge fan of this film, but uh, Leatherface on Blu-ray, gotta have it. After that, we have... Uh, Demon Seed, which is a film I don't know a ton about, but it looks pretty cool, so I picked that one up as well. Uh, and then we grabbed Night School, which is one that looks really cool. I heard it's not that great, but um, this, I don't know if this was a TV movie or what, but it was, uh, no, it's an R, so I doubt it was a TV movie. Slasher from the 80s, it looks like, so. I, I love the cover. It, the title sounds cool. Um, it looks like it would be fun, so um, pick that up. Uh, then we have uh, The Thing from Another World, which I actually got from Jeremy in the box office brawl competition. So he picked me up The Thing from Another World. Uh, then I bought this one myself. This was Dracula AD 1972. I didn't buy this in the sale. I actually just bought this off of Amazon when it was released or close to it. Uh, then we have An Invasion of the Body Snatchers or just Body Snatchers. The Invasion Continues. Uh, the 70s version. I hear this is really good, but I've never seen it. Uh, just a couple of more here. We have The Swarm. I seen this when I was a kid. I haven't seen it in a long time. I was shocked to see this as an hour and fifty six or one hundred and fifty six minutes. Um, but yeah, this is a uh, this is a killer insect film. I love the cover. I was I was hoping this was gonna get a Blu Ray release from them one day. Uh, and then we have The Satanic Rites of Dracula, which I believe is the last um, Dracula in the Hammer films. Uh, so I was really happy to pick this up. I do like Hammer. Uh, and then finally here, Horror of Dracula, which is another awesome, um, you know, uh, Hammer release here. So uh, really, really happy with these Warner archives here. As you can see, um, we got a ton of them here. I, I didn't own any, and now I own a bunch. So really happy about that. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Uh, there's still some more titles I want to pick up. Uh, if you want to get Warner Archive, I definitely recommend hitting up the four for four sale that they or four for forty four sale that they do, because that's the cheapest way to get them. It's usually free shipping, so you're paying eleven dollars per title, uh, which is a great deal. And you don't have to get four. You don't have to get multiples of four, so you get four, five, six. You can get, and it's still just eleven dollars uh, per title after you get four. Um, but yeah, uh, usually when they do the sale, the newest titles aren't on there, but they did a 4 for 44 sale, and then uh, just a couple of weeks later, they did another one for their like 50th anniversary or something, so um, that was really cool. So anyway, that is it, guys. That's the update. I hope you guys enjoyed. I uh, have a ton of cool stuff here to watch. Really excited about that. Um, you know, if you, uh, if you guys do updates, link me your videos in the comments or something. I, I always like watching updates. Um, so yeah, uh, please leave comments and you know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. So peace out.